Hello and welcome to the Car and Bike Show here on the NDTV network. My name is Girish Karkera and as usual I've got you some exciting news and reviews and views from the world of automobiles in India. We are going to start off with Yamaha. Well, the brand, although it hasn't hit the big league yet, but slowly and steadily, it has been working on its models and making them state of the art. Recently, they have revamped the entire lineup of its motorcycles, and we have King Shuk Datta, who had a chance to sample the updated FZX in Rajasthan. Let's find out. It was the first crossover attempt from Yamaha in the premium commuter segment. It had its quirks, especially with regards to its design, and it has been updated for 2023. We are talking about the Yamaha FZX, which now gets few extra features and a new color. We are here in the majestic and royal city of Jaipur, and right now, I am with the updated 2023 Yamaha FZX in the beautiful Amer Fort. Now, by the look of it, the motorcycle doesn't seem to get too many updates. That's because most of the updates are under the skin. So we'll tell you how the motorcycle rides and what are the updates. So let us quickly tell you about the changes that the 2023 Yamaha FZX gets. To begin with, the color that you see here, dark matte blue with gold rims, it is brand new and it definitely stands out. Plus, the indicator lamps are now LED, which means the bike gets full LED lighting. Lastly, there's also switchable traction control offered as standard. The big question is whether a 150cc motorcycle needs traction control or not. For such a bike with a frugal power and torque output, which will be mostly used as a daily runabout on city roads, it may be an overkill. A better option would have been to provide dual channel ABS instead. The traction control system itself is rudimentary considering there is no ride by wire. It works with the help of a sensor that looks very similar to an ABS sensor on the rear wheel. As far as its handling is concerned, the FCX feels light and nimble and can be easily navigated in all sorts of situations. Right from people coming at you from the wrong side to elephants on the road as well. The engine on the motorcycle is RDE compliant, so it meets the latest emission norms and uh, the urban chaos, that's where the FZX thrives. The specs may not make for the best of reading, it may not be the best in the segment, but the urban chaos, your intra-city dashes, your daily commutes, the FZX takes care of all of that really, really nicely. The ergonomics are really comfortable, there is enough performance, enough juice in the engine for daily commutes, for tackling all that heavy duty traffic and uh, most importantly, like we said, the ride quality is really, really comfortable even over broken patches of road. There are a couple of negatives. Firstly, the instrument cluster does not have gear position indicator and secondly, the sweet spot of this motorcycle is between 75 to 80 kilometers per hour. After that, the engine starts getting really, really vibey. That means the motorcycle is perfect for urban commute, but if you want to take the motorcycle on long highway rides, it's not the best idea that you'll have. At 1,37,000 rupees X showroom Delhi, the FZX with its price sits between 150 and 200 cc models, with the former being more affordable and the latter being more performance oriented. So, the FZX may not be the first option you look at when you are considering a 150-200cc to 200cc bike. But, having said that, 
If you're looking for a good, solid commuter with a bit of character and uniqueness, look no further than the Yamaha FZX. When you think electric scooters, which is the flavor of the season, we think of startups. Well, traditional bike makers are finally getting their act together. Companies like TVS and Bajaj now have their two-wheelers in the market for us. But how good are they? And more importantly, how good are they against each other? We have King Shuk Datta answering this very interesting question. Two electric scooters, two legacy manufacturers, the Bajaj Chetak and the TVS iCube. Both these scooters have been in the market for three years now. And this is the first time we are pitting them against each other because these two scooters are traditional rivals in the real sense, as they have always been. Bajaj and TVS, two storied brands with rich history and heritage, stepped into the electric two-wheeler segment almost at the same time. And today, it is time for them once again to go head to head. The iCube and the Chetak are poles apart in terms of design and yet look quite handsome. The Bajaj carries a quintessential new retro design with the round LED headlight, curved front apron and the Vespa-esque silhouette and a shapely rear section. The fit and finish on the Chetak is excellent all around and the scooter looks quite proportionate. The single-sided swing arm at the rear and the trailing link suspension show off the lovely 12-inch alloys. The iCube on the other hand is more conventional in its design. Solidly built, the design on the iCube has universal appeal having a fine balance of form and function. There's a 7-inch color TFT display on the iCube which is nice and easy to read. The theme changes depending on the mode you ride in. Plus, the display also shows when the scooter goes into region mode. The controls can be accessed via a 5-way joystick on the left switch cube, which feels intuitive to use. The centerpiece on the Chetak is the circular negative LCD display, which shows a decent bit of information, but is not the easiest to read especially in bright daylight. Both scooters get Bluetooth and app connectivity with call alerts, geofencing, USB charging port as standard, along with full LED lighting and a low speed reverse gear. The TVS iCube gets turn by turn navigation additionally. The Chetak and the iCube get 18 and 17 liters of underseat storage. The Chetak also has an additional cubby hole on the inside of the front apron. In terms of features, the iCube S edges ahead. And in terms of practicality, the Chetak takes the win. The Chetak makes more power, but the iCube makes more torque. Chetak has a rated top speed of just 63 km per hour, which may be little too less for commuting duties, especially in bigger cities. But it makes up in other departments. If it is performance that you're looking for straight up, then the TVS iCube is a better bet. It has a higher top speed of 78 km per hour. It handles better thanks to the telescopic front fork and it is lighter at 119 kgs. But if it is comfort that you're looking for, practicality, then the Chetak scores marginally higher in terms of ride quality and comfier ergonomics, yes. Plus, thanks to its metal body, the Chetak weighs in at 133 kilograms, significantly heavier than the iCube. 
iQ feels more planted at higher speeds and feels lighter on its feet. Both scooters offer decent braking performance in terms of feel and bite. Both scooters have two riding modes. The Chetak has Eco and Sports, while the iCube has Eco and Power. As far as charging times are concerned, the Chetak takes less time to charge than the iCube. From zero, the Chetak takes about 4 hours to charge fully, while the TVS takes up to 4 hours 30 minutes to charge fully with a 650 watt charger. Bajaj says that the Chetak is doing really well in semi-urban and rural areas. That's because the brand, the name Chetak still has a lot of pull. It's a beautifully crafted scooter, it looks really good, is well finished, is proportionate and is comfortable and practical as well. But the footprint of the Chetak is not as widespread as the TVS iCube. So the winner of this comparison has to be the TVS iCube because if you're looking for performance, if you're looking for features, the TVS iCube makes a lot of sense. Plus, the big deciding factor was the fact that this is priced at 1,10,000 rupees on road Delhi, while that is priced at 1,58,000 rupees on road Delhi. So there's a huge price difference. And yes, the TVS iCube comes across as a more well-rounded package. Welcome back, and from two wheels, we now move into four. I'm talking about the BMW 3 Series now. BMW has recently launched an updated 3 Series, but in a grand limo avatar. So what is new here? We sent Pratik Rakshit to find out. Let's have a look. The name BMW is synonymous with performance. And one name in the brand's lineup has always been the benchmark in its class. And talking about benchmarks, there's none better than the BMW 3 Series. It's the ideal driver's car and we proved it even in a comprehensive review with the new C-Class, the S60 and the Audi A4. Now in its 2023 avatar, the car comes with a comprehensive upgrades both to its exterior and interior, but the only constant is the powertrains. Hi, my name is Pratik Rakshit and today with us is the 2023 BMW 3 Series Grand Limousine in its petrol avatar. With the 2023 model, BMW has left no stone unturned in improving the styling. But these changes are very subtle and will take a keen eye to spot the difference. The headlamps are now slimmer, shorter and flatter. It looks meaner than before and more contemporary. Even the signature BMW grille is not obnoxiously large but in fact looks quite refreshing in the flesh. The slightly tweaked front bumpers receive a gloss black finish. While the short overhangs, a long bonnet, horizontal lines and flared rear wheel arches add to the superior dimensions of the car while maintaining its sporty intent. And that's all the changes you'll see on the outside. While the exterior receives subtle changes, the cabin receives some updates too. Now the biggest issue I had with the previous generation of the 3 Series was that it did not have a very premium looking cabin. So now with the 2023 avatar, BMW has made sure that you get this huge display that is very similar to what we've seen 
on the flagship electric SUV of BMW as well as on the 7 series. So now you get a 12.3 inch instrument panel right behind the steering wheel which is an extremely good looking very uh, sophisticated looking clean looking uh, panel as well as a 14.9 inch display at the center which is now compatible with iDrive 8. The previous model had the 7 version this one has the 8 and with it you also get all the latest updates that BMW offers. Lower down if you see the air convents have slimmered down they look more sophisticated they look more clean and even the center uh, dashboard where you get to keep your cup holders also gets a new pattern which also looks very clean and has that very minimum vibe going for it. If you remember in the previous model of the 3 series the car used to get a gear selector so that is now replaced by a toggle switch. You also get your parking mode which is constant. At the side of course you get your rotary knob with your usual settings and this also doubles up as your selector for whatever runs on the screen. Cabin space remains unaltered with ample space for four adults since the transmission tunnel hampers space for the middle seat. There's more than decent headroom and more than ample knee room, even the front seats backed up to the max. Flick your foot at the rear and the electric tailgate pops open, revealing 480 litres of boot space. Fold the back seats down and you get a useful 1500 litres more to play with. The seats are nicely dressed in Vernasca leather upholstery, making an elegant statement. While those at the back receive individual AC vents and controls along with two Type-C charging slots. And that's where the changes with the 2023 BMW 3 Series Grand Limousine end. Because the engine and transmission options are retained from the earlier model. And since there's no change mechanically, even the driving mannerisms of the car hasn't changed. It's still authoritative, it's still quick off the mark, and it's still the quickest in the segment. And I'm in love with the performance of this car, and never do you feel that it's underpowered. Uh, sports mode and the paddle shifters alter the genes of the car altogether and makes it even more enjoyable to drive. But what binds them together is the 8-speed Steptronic automatic transmission that is such a mind reader when it comes to shifts. The 50-50 weight distribution is effective at corners. The steering is precise, the body control is excellent and the grip is plentiful which makes the 3 Series great fun to throw around. With this stiffer suspension, the car takes care of potholes comfortably. What slightly deters the overall experience are the tyres. A better set would have worked wonders. The 3 Series Grand Limousine is loaded with heaps of safety equipment to keep the occupants safe. Alongside the usual array of 6 airbags and emergency braking systems, the 3 Series also comes with front and rear parking sensors as standard. Cruise control, auto hold, as well as 3 point seat belts for all passengers at the back. So, what's our verdict then? The 2023 3 Series takes things to the next level. BMW has improved key elements of the car, making it an even more exciting prospect in its new Avtar. A newer and much improved cabin helps things keep fresh in the segment. Bolder looks keep things interesting on the outside. And that engine transmission combination, what do we even say about it? The 2 litre turbo unit is possibly the best in the business and has enough character in it to rival the C-Class and even the Audi A4. The Volvo S60 
is no longer listed on the company's website. So expect a facelift soon. If you want my two cents, there is no beating the 3 series in its own game, and the car ups the ante in its latest avatar. The 330 Li M Sport trim hasn't received a substantial price bump, but it's the 330 LD M Sport that is dearer by three lakh rupees compared to the earlier prices. That is. That being said, the 2023 BMW 3 Series Grand Limousine is the most practical sports sedan out there right now. So that's all we have time for this week. We'll be back next week with some more exciting stuff, including this lovely BMW M340i. Until next time, drive safely, ride patiently, and follow traffic rules. Thanks for watching. Thank you.